Hello, my name is David Valdez, and today I want to talk about rules of exponents. So um, the first thing we need to know before we get into the rules is the simple definition of an exponential form. So let's take a look at that. What is something that has the exponential form Well, when we say that something is exponential in form, it's anything that looks something like this. a to the n power. And what that's equal to is a times a times a, and that just keeps going n number of times. So it's a, um, it's a repeated product, and this product is repeated the number of times shown by that uh, superscript there. So we say a to the n power, or a with an exponent of n, gives us a times a times a, and that just keeps going n number of times. So just as a quick numbered example to illustrate that, suppose I had 2 to the third power. Then what that really means is 2 times 2 times 2, which gives us 8. Now. We can derive some rules from this definition, and I'm not going to go through the derivations, but let me at least state those rules. So there are kind of a lot of them that are commonly used. It's, it's nice to have a few in your mind so that you can use it quickly to evaluate expressions or later solve equations. So here are some of the rules, and um, I think you could just keep it coming up with more rules so long as it uh, fits this definition here. So here is rule number one. This isn't a standard rule number one, it's just the first one I'm thinking of. So here it is. a to the n times a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m power. So it turns out that if you expand this first exponential expression and you multiply it by this second exponential expression, that would be the same thing as if you added the exponents together. Now that's only true if this is a and this is also a. This is called the base of an exponential expression. And if the base is the same when you're multiplying two exponential expressions together, then you can add the powers, okay? But they have to be the same for this to work. And I invite you to show that that's true using this definition uh, when you get a chance. Here's another one, number two. Um, and after I show all these rules on the next few videos, I'll go through several examples, uh, numbered and algebraic and so on. Okay, so here's the next rule I can think of. Suppose we had a fraction, a to the n over or divided by a to the m. It turns out that an equivalent expression is a to the n minus m power. And there are some interesting things that uh, come as a result of this rule, and I'll just state them as other rules. I could say it must be true also that a to the negative n power is equal to 1 over a to the n power. Okay, and that one's an interesting one to remember in particular because that negative here is just telling you that you're looking at a fraction. It's not telling you that this number is negative, it's just saying, hey, Here's a fraction, it's the same as this over here. Saves a little space to write it as a to the negative n power. And you'll come across negative exponents as you're working some of these other expressions, so it's nice to know uh, what that means as a fraction. Okay, rule number four, let's say. Rule number four. Um, as a consequence to this, we could say that a to the zero power, or a consequence to this one, a to the zero power is equal to one. And that's another interesting one. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. And that comes directly from, um, I would say this is the easiest way to take a look at it. Just imagine that these two things are the same. M and M. M minus M is zero. Anything over itself is one. Take a few minutes, work that out on your own, and uh, convince yourself that indeed this one is true a to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, rule number five. Um, suppose we had, in parentheses, an exponential expression like a to the n. 
and that is raised to the power m. In this case, what this is telling you, if you take a look at the definition, is that you're multiplying a to the n m number of times. And when you expand it out, you can see that it's true that this is equivalent to a to the n m power, where I just multiplied these two. Okay. So when you have an exponential expression in the parentheses raised to an exponent, you can multiply the outside exponent times the inside exponent to get the uh, final exponent here of the base a. Okay, so that's rule number five. Um, rule number six, we can sort of keep going with this one and say that uh, it also must be true that parentheses a to the n times b to the m, all of that to the p power is the same as a to the np times b to the mp power. So I'm distributing this power to the powers of the exponential expressions inside. Now this is only true if you're multiplying here uh, or dividing as I'll show in a different rule, but if you have a plus or a minus here, then be very careful. You cannot simply distribute those powers. And again, I'm going to show examples of all these rules, but I just wanted to stick those rules up there for you right away before I continue with a bunch of examples. Um, here's another one, rule number seven. We can say that, uh, like this one, suppose we had a fraction, a to the n over uh, b to the m, and all of that is raised to the p power. Well, it turns out that you can distribute this power to the powers the same way we did here. And that gives me a to the np on top over b to the mp on the bottom. Okay. And let me give you one more. Rule number eight. And um, this one is kind of a convenience rule. I suppose all of these are convenience rules. You could go back to the definition for any evaluation of exponents, uh, but that gets a little ugly. So uh, rule number eight, suppose we had some sort of fraction, a over b, to the negative power on the outside. Well, it turns out you can show that this is the same thing as the following. Flip that fraction over, b over a, to the positive n power. And sometimes that's convenient uh, to use that rule. So there are eight convenient rules to evaluate and manipulate exponential expressions. And on the next few videos, I'm gonna just going to show several examples of using these rules. Uh, sometimes you only need one rule. Sometimes you're using several rules in conjunction. Um, and it seems like a lot to remember, but once you have it, you become a master of solving these exponential puzzles, and it's kind of fun. So um, stay tuned for the next videos.